Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster. My name is Gaius Bowling, and I am joined by the bros again. Let's go. How we doing, fellas? Doing great. Doing great. (laughs) Uh, Just in case you can't recognize his voice again, this is Jack, our buddy Jack. And, of course, (laughs) Owen uh, is always on uh, the show with us. And uh, this episode was going to have – we were going to talk about uh, 20th anniversary Attack of the Clones. I know I mentioned that last week. But um, decided to make this all about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because there's a a lot to unpack and it's going to be a spoiler-filled discussion. So if you haven't seen it yet, (laughs) uh, if you haven't seen it yet, listen at your own peril, I guess. (laughs) Um, But yeah, even all the news-related items today are related to the movie. So uh, we're just kind of minus one, minus one, minus one. Uh, But most of them are. Um, But yeah, we're gonna. jump into that and talk about what we uh what we enjoyed what we maybe didn't enjoy kind of where i i don't know if i want to rank it in the whole mcu but i do kind of want to kind of see where you guys think it fits in like the phase four that we're in right now uh yeah and uh yeah so uh in case shout out to all <laughs> the mothers too it's day after mother <laughs> shout out to all yes. the mothers Oh God! I, yeah, uh, mine had a really good time yesterday. Uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of videos of her dancing all over this place we go to called Waterman's, and all she wanted was the DJ to play like something by someone black, and he did for like four, <laughs> for, for forty five. <laughs> he Gators, did for Mama Mama Boland's rules. Yeah, I think he did for like forty five minutes, and like every time she thought she was done dancing, she like come back to the table, and then like she hear another song and run back out to dance <laughs> more. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was like, a great time had by all. Like uh, a lot of her friends were there too, and she likes to do that on Mother's Day. We haven't gotten uh, to do that the last couple of years because of COVID, but mm-hmm. it was fun to get back. It was fun to get back out there with her. So yeah, what shout out to all the moms. One of her favorite days. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> um, well, um, I guess we weren't the only people that saw Doctor Strange uh, this weekend because... A few oh, other wait, people, Mark, too, man. Few, spent few, some few, money. Few people, a few other people <laughs> spent some money. Um, you know, we I, we predicted on here, we said it would do $180 million. That's what I put on Joe Blow, and that's what Owen said last week. Before you um, tell it, let me, let me guess first. Okay. I haven't, haven't read anything. I haven't no, read no. anything. I'm gonna go with two, two twenty. All right, now no, oh, so we were close. We were, we were actually high. close. A tad high. So what? In, so on Sunday, the estimate was 185 million dollars. So we were initially five million dollars off. So we were very close. Mm-hmm. But then, but then the Monday final numbers came in. It actually did a little bit better. It did 187.4 nice. um, over over the weekend. Um, even though it, it got a B plus cinema score, which is kind of like on the lower end for Marvel. Yeah, but like, that sounds low. It, yeah, it didn't really affect uh, word of mouth, at least throughout the weekend. Um, Saturday business wasn't that uh, much off if you take out the Thursday preview number. Uh, and that's a good indication that word of mouth, at least for people <laughs> just talking about it, was pretty good. Um, you know, it. I, I, w- I would ask you guys, um, it, it's probably obvious, uh, but I don't think it's just like a Marvel thing. I think this movie was coming off the heat of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and, yep. and you know off the heat of WandaVision a lot of people were into that and wanted to see what she was going to do in this movie but I would I'll still throw it out there like why do you think that uh the opening was so high this weekend and uh yeah pretty much that's it well I think that it it just kind of comes off with this multiverse thing um and uh guess you and I talked about a little bit before too that um, Benedict Cumberbatch has kind of taken over as like sort of the lead of the quote unquote new Avengers, you could kind of say. So it's like his role is kind of becoming pretty critical in not just his movie, but in pretty much everything. I mean, he was in Spider Man No Way Home. Um, his magic is the one that opens the multiverse and has the ability. I guess now with our new with the new character, Mark Chavez, um, that is her power. So it's like she's um, going to be the one who's kind of jumping between realities and things, but. Um, I really think that just the story in a general sense of it opens the door for pretty much anything to happen. And, um, it gives a lot of comic book fans the ability to say, Hey, this thing from a comic book that maybe not be super well known has the 
opportunity to present itself within the MCU now. And I think a lot of people are still riding the high of um, the big one, Spider-Man for sure. But um, Marvel's just on a really good run right now. And I think that anytime, I mean, it's also been marketed the hell out of. So everyone has known it's been coming for a long time. And uh, there was a lot of high expectations. So I think that was proven in the box office for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this was easily their next tent pole. Like, this was like basically set up phase five and beyond type type plan planning after this movie. I can't really attest anything to the downturn from day to day. I mean, it was a solid movie. Like, this is coming from one of the like the harshest people when it comes to like uh, like the storylines of Marvel. Like, this is you know, you guys are just whitewashing because it is Marvel. But I think it was fantastic for what it was. I do want to point, I do want to take, uh, go on your word, Owen, by saying I hope they don't actually, like, kind of open the door for, like, things like the John Krasinski and the, and, like, the, whatever her name is, Captain, British Captain America, whatever, Peggy Carter. Like, it was awesome. Fan service the hell out of us. I mean, it deserves, like, all the applause. But then <clears throat> just to take it away. It's just like, okay, like, you're never going to get that again. Like, you are never, you wanted it, like, you're never going to get it again. So, from that turn, like, I hope they don't do that. But I do love that, like, it's now open. It's free game. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. And then on top of that, Marvel's putting a lot of trust in America Chavez. Because yeah. from the movie, she's the only one. Like there's not multiple versions of her, mm -hmm. so right. this this girl must be like some like fantastic actor, um, who like can at least hold us uh, you know supporting role as like we need her for the powers because like mm -hmm. that was one thing I was like damn is she the, she's the only one like that's like in the multiverse that's that's basically <clears throat> she's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I you know I think. All of that stuff is right. And, you know, we talked about like it coming off of Spider-Man, uh, coming off of WandaVision. If you're a big uh, <clears throat> movie fan and you care about who's directing a project, Sam Raimi actually doing this was a big deal for a lot of uh, mm -hmm. fans. I, mean, I think I thought it was I thought it was interesting that this movie opens on like the week that Spider-Man celebrates his 20th anniversary, and you know he directed that film, and you and then as long he also opened on the 15th anniversary of Spider-Man three, which kind of ended his kind of like superhero kind of filmmaking thing for a while. Cause he was a little disillusioned with how that movie turned out and didn't know if he wanted to direct a lot of big movies again, which is why he went back to doing stuff like drag me to hell and like smaller movies. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, there are a lot of people that were like wanting him, wanting to see him do his thing. And like, it, Marvel pretty much let him. It seemed like they let him do whatever he kind of wanted. They gave least, him a lot of free reign yeah, for sure. A, a lot of leeway. There is a lot of like Evil Dead in this movie. There's a lot, a lot of, of dark Dragon stuff. Battle. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's very signature Sam Raimi. And like you know, before the movie opened, and people that were seeing it in press screenings, they were just saying like, "I'm so glad that they just it, his signature is all over it." Mm -hmm. and if you're a fan, mm -hmm. if you're a fan of his work, that is. You know, I think a lot of people were, cu were curious to see how it would turn out. And the fact that Kevin Feige, even from the start, said that this was going to be the the MCU's, like, first, like, horror movie. That's how they kind of sold it. Um, I think people were kind of curious to see if they were able to blend that in with, you know, the stuff that they, they normally do. And I it, I think they were successful at putting those two genres together. Definitely. Um, Way more successful than like when they tried to do. I mean, I know this wasn't MCU, but like when the New Mutants was trying to promote itself on like, oh, it's like a, it's a superhero horror <laughs> the movie. New and, Mutants. And, and, that, <laughs> and, that, and that and that didn't work. I mean, that didn't work for that, but this really did. And um, I think it was just like a perfect storm of like all these kind of things. And I kind of want to give Elizabeth Olsen has like a lot of heat on social media. Like a lot of people love her. And they love mm -hmm. that character. They love that character. I'm not saying that, you know, Ben to Cumberbatch doesn't have love as Doctor Strange, but there there are a lot of people, well, there was a mix, but there were a lot of people that were like, I'm seeing this because of her. Like, they like that yeah. character so much. Um, and I think it's She definitely too, had the most she, screen time, for well, sure. You, you, she had, you got, definitely, you, it was you basically her movie. <laughs> yeah. The people who and, like, I think, the witch got what they wish for. They definitely did. And, like, I think that she did an interview that came out over the weekend and you know she is just as surprised as the fans are that 
they keep bringing her back because she was like, I signed on for at least two movies. That was it. And then everything else after that, it's been like they've written it for her. They're like, we want you to come back and do this. So by the, you know, when, by the time she gets WandaVision, she's still shocked that they're using her so much. And then they put her in this and she's still surprised. So but I think they found something really good in her as an actress and then also really good in that character. There's a lot going on. It's like a really oh, yeah. multifaceted character uh, to explore. And I, and I think she, each time she comes into these movies, she gets better and better and better. And, she lost uh, the accent, her, finally. Her character well, keeps getting better and better. Yeah, she gets she's more interesting every time they use her, and every like you time. know that, and I, yeah, and I think like expanding on her, uh, who she is, and kind of what makes her tick. They did that. They did that a lot in this movie too. Um, it's very interesting for the fans, and I think that's a combination of like good writing for the character, and also I think she does a phenomenal job as that character too. She's a pretty damn good actress, and she keeps proving it time and time again with uh, each Marvel outing she's in. So I think it was like a perfect storm of like why this did so well this weekend um where it goes from here i mean a a lot of of these times these movies are really front loaded uh you know there's a big fanboy rush to see them opening weekend um but it's it's another success for them i mean it it opened to 450 million dollars globally so all over the world um and i i think they could have at least close to a billion dollar earner in this yeah Um, i think so it just depends on you know, it depends on. Uh, I don't know what what the release deal with is in China yet. Um, uh, that's usually like a big market for movies like this. But but even mm-hmm. Spider Man didn't op- even Spider Man didn't open in China, and it was able to clear well beyond a billion dollars worldwide. Um, but yeah, I'm curious I to see where it does go next. It doesn't really have like a ton of, it doesn't really have like a lot of competition until Top Gun opens at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, I'm I I think it might pull around eight hundred. Towards the end, I think it's going to lose a lot of heat at the end because people are just going to wait till Disney Plus. That's just my that's my guess. I don't think I don't think it'll hit a bill just because the only like, what is it? It's Batman, Joker, Avengers, Spider Man are like the only billion dollar movies. <clears throat> I personally don't think that Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch themselves can carry the billion dollar mark. It's a phenomenal movie and it's going to make a shit ton of money, but I just don't think it'll hit the billy. I don't know. I think that it has a good chance of it. I mean, like we were saying, it's like this is I mean, we're not going to get another Iron Man movie. So to have another one that comes out at like for Marvel to reach a billion. I mean, Spider-Man was I guess. the Is it really been the only one that hit a billion? Did any of the other ones? Avengers did. Uh, uh, and Avengers Game and... Did. I think Captain Marvel did too. Barely. Yeah. And that was just because there was a lot of momentum, like, it, you know, introducing her and then it being right mm-hmm. into the next two Avengers movies. I think that had a lot yeah. to do with that. Yeah, but I, I think this movie was really good. Um, I definitely had some issues with, um, I think that her character has been written very well, the Scarlet Witch, but it's like her motivation for the murderous rampage that she went on was basically just, she's like, oh, I want to be with my kids. I'm like, <laughs> like I just want, I want to kill uh, like another Wanda and take their place. And I'm like, well, why don't you just dream walk and see your kids or something? Like, I don't know. It just didn't seem, it seemed like her just wanting to be with her kids was not for the extent of I'm going to basically tear apart the entire multiverse in order to be with them. I felt like that was, it's, it, it, it just had a little bit of a um, less weight to me than I thought. And then she doesn't even mention vision. She's like, yeah, multiverse, but like, I don't really give a fuck about the guy that I've, <laughs> Fallen in love with, like yeah, I want yeah, to see. What about going to see another Vision? Like maybe go and see him too, dude. That thank you, you said it. Yes. Where is the other Vision in all of these universes that like she's like is like what? There has to be a Vision <laughs> for the Wanda in each universe. There's gonna be a different one. So like, why aren't you just going to see Vision first? Maybe talk to him yeah. out. You know, he's a really good listener. Yeah, he's <laughs> really good. He's a isn't, super isn't that phenomenal she... listener. And isn't that how she got her kids, right? It's with Vision. So, like, well, why doesn't she just go I mean, find a yeah. Vision and ha- have some kids? <laughs> I don't know. Also, oh. she does mention Vision, and she's like, I shot the man I love through the head. I'm like, yo, he was a synthetic, sentient being with a goddamn infinity stone in his head. 
Mm -hmm. I get it that you like, you know, you had a connection with them, but there are actual humans out there that we can, you know, hook hook you up with here. There are people who want to. She's also a powerful witch. Like, if she's going to find someone that loves her, it's going to be probably someone who's had a pretty similar experience to her. So uh, probably another superhero. Yeah, I can't. Um, I can't think that the magical community is this small in the Marvel universe. Not anymore. Exactly. I mean, we're seeing a lot of characters. Well, you know what? If if, um, if Hawkeye wasn't married, it'd probably be him because they had a connection. They had a, a sort of like a little thing. They, uh, I guess. they had like yeah, he like they kind of bonded when you know when you know um, in the course of, of the movies that they were in together. But yeah, Just, uh, but she did love him. It's very clear that she loved Vision. Yeah, and yeah. that like especially on the show, they make it very clear that I mean, no, losing him like ruined her, and like yeah. that's why she did what she did on the show. I do think it's interesting though. By the end of WandaVision. I thought that she was in a place where she was like, I can't kind of live in this world of, of make believe. I, you know, because she saw what it did. But then mm-hmm. she kind of is right back. She's right back to that place when we see her again in this movie, where okay. it's like, okay, she's yeah. not quite good. <laughs> she's not quite well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like she didn't, she didn't <laughs> get like, over speaking it. Speaking of that, this, this might be the first Marvel movie that actually faked me out of the villain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't like, expecting they, her like, either. No, I like because we live in we live in um in an affluent town in Southern California. So that sometimes we run across like actual like big movie producers who come to like the bars we hang out at. It. I remember one time one of the guys who worked on it said it was going to be Nightmare, which I totally believed, and I was like fully like they're going to battle Nightmare together. But for Wanda to come around and just be like, I'm the most powerful Avenger. I don't even think you can consider her oh. an Avenger now. Like just. Like, oh, they'll just, take her if they, they they'll take her if they need her. <laughs> oh yeah, no, She's yeah. Just get, her, just get her some therapy, man. Just get her a little like some therapy. Yes, She's I good. was literally gonna say the same thing. <laughs> like after all of this, you, you don't defeat Wanda by like overpowering her. Literally, um, Merrick Chavez was like, "All right, you know how I'm gonna solve this? Boom, therapy. Go talk to <laughs> yeah, yourself." <laughs> <It's> yeah, like, <laughs> and then she's like, "All right, you know what." I'm going to look inward, and I think I've messed up. So let's return this to the state of the world as it, as it always was. I was like, that's so funny that that was what finally brought her down was some oh. self-reflection. Oh, my God. I knew that from the beginning. Once she said she wants her kids, I knew for a fact the end would be her, like, going to, like, find some kids, uh, find her kids, and they're just absolutely terrified. And there's the realization of, oh, I'm the monster. Like it's one of the classic tropes of being a villain, but yeah. still she was fantastic. Like she, the only gripe I have with her is that when they're at Tar- uh, Kamartage the first time, she whispers every other sentence. <laughs> she does. Did you notice? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. She's like, I've been trying to be polite with you. And this is me not being polite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, all right, like choose and choose an octave and let's stay with yeah, but you know what? It, it was something. It was something like I, I. I get what you're saying, but it was also something so crazily creepy about her doing that. Sometimes, where oh, she was absolutely. like, she, she was, like you could tell that she was just unstable. She was like, "This is me being reasonable. Don't make me act like unreasonable." Yeah, <laughs> like, that, was, like, that was pretty scary. I was like, "Damn, she's holding back right now." Like, like she is not playing with you guys. She wants her kids. <laughs> she will do whatever she needs to to get them. Including kill this girl, take your power. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I will tip my hat to Sam Raimi. I think he really pulled out some some good horror sort of things. Like there were some jump scares for sure. Um, and I guess I was just kind of really like uh, thinking about this recently. Was I mean, people who have like us for Marvel, like it's been around for now like almost fifteen years. So a lot of the fans have kind of grown up a little bit. So they're able to maybe necessarily see something that's a little bit darker. Obviously you want to keep the kids uh, happy and they're all going to be Marvel fans for years to come and stuff like that. But I loved how um, he took a step and they were able to give him a lot of creative freedom. I think like when he did Spider-Man um, like there were some creepy elements, especially with green goblin. Like that was scary to me when I was a kid was like um, hit that inner monologue. But this gosh, if I saw this when I was a kid, man, those like death spirits that said don't trespass on a dead body, like you can't dream walk into a dead body. Those things were yeah. terrifying. Like that would have scared the living shit out of me if I was a kid. So like I think they did a really good job. Um, I mean, obviously now that I'm older, it was just really cool to see. But um, yeah, I think if they had slapped an all rating, it definitely would not have made 187 million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like, I just don't think that it made like an R rating. Like. Mm. 
Like our rating is like gays can can, can agree. Like our ratings for like horror films with like blood and stuff. Like yes, it was scary, but yeah. it was more like the ah scary. Like not. Yeah, but like, they did implode some dude's head. That was yeah. Cool. I would. I do want to get into that because. <laughs> Because variety, because we they there was a lot of issues with the MPA and like some people over the weekend. I even got a text from someone I used to go to Comic Con with, uh, who has an eleven year old, and not that he was like upset that he took his eleven year old, but he was shocked by like some of the stuff that they were able to do as a you know it with the PG thirteen rating, and Variety kind of broke it down. They felt like because Marvel is such a huge and Disney such a huge entity that they kind of like work their way around getting the PG-13 rating by kind of being like, oh, this is like superhero violence. These aren't really, it's not like horror movie, like blood and gore. This is like, it's all fantastical and it's all like very much like fake and it's not like real life. And yeah. they were also, they were saying that like a movie like Dunkirk was PG-13, even though there are scenes in that that were, uh, that could have pushed it into an R rating. Um, oddly enough, like Sam Raimi's like Drag Me to Hell, I thought was rated R because there's a lot of imagery in that that seems like it would be, and that's PG thirteen. I mean, there's like they were saying there's a difference between like the realism of the violence, and I guess here too, like we uh, in America, they care more about like foul language over violence when it comes to like rating a movie because they were saying like really, uh, they were saying that planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, planes, trains, and automobiles is rated R, and it's it's because of a scene where there's like a barrage of like f bombs, and everything mm. else in the movie is not make it anything worthy of an R rating. Um, yeah, I mean, that it's being like said, Wolf Street. Said, Wolf of Wall Street was rated R because of the nudity and the language. I mean, they said language. the f word more than any other movie in the and in, ever made. So it's like maybe that they do take that into effect. I mean, I yeah, don't see why I that. I don't see why that. I mean, I'd rather see have my kid hear a curse word than watch someone get their head cut off so yeah <laughs> if that's like <laughs> necessarily the right viewpoint but i i was surprised i thought they pushed the boundary a little i mean i there have been so much hype about it being like oh a horror movie and there's some horror movie elements in it and the, when we were sitting in the theater watching it i was like oh this isn't like too bad but when it got to the scene where she just destroyed like the entire Illuminati, and like it was just like every death almost felt like it got worse. Like, yeah, it was like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, like I, I can't believe they're actually like, even though they kind of cleverly cut uh, some of the violence, like the way they were cutting around it, it was still pretty out there for a Marvel movie made by Disney. Um, I, I was really yeah, surprised I mean, that they were allowed to do that. I think the killing of Professor X was like terrifying i mean yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like he comes out of the smoke and breaks his neck out of this like red fog and she looks like a demon and all like as soon as john krasinski died i was like oh they are all dead no. they're all gonna die <laughs> when yeah, he first yeah. got dead i was like okay like he's i've never seen this character before um like maybe he'll just be a casualty but then john krasinski like i also feel bad for him because he got kind of shafted like he had oh, i knew you were gonna say that like, he got some bad lines like his his line was, "The building's been breached," and I was like, "Oh gosh, okay, whatever." <laughs> like, and then his action is him just like doing like a punch, and then her blocking it and killing him. Like he didn't really do anything, and I also didn't really like the way that his um, I didn't really see him as Reed Richards. It didn't really translate to me. He was too like I was telling you this case. Like I would have thought like sort of nerdy Jim from early Office. That's a good Reed Richards, but like hot. Like buff John Krasinski does not, does not really, <laughs> like breathe Reed Richards to me. I guess it worked. For, it worked yeah. for me. I mean, I, like yeah. I said, like I said earlier, like I hope they don't set this precedent of like where they can fan <clears throat> they can fan service because of the multiverse and be like, all right, we're done, kill them. Yeah. Um, I hope True. they don't go down that road. But yeah, the entire Illuminati. <clears throat> I mean, it didn't re- like it didn't we didn't need it, but it was awesome. Like. Seeing Captain Carter just get completely diced by her own shield. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was so sick! Yeah. Like well, the thing that didn't make sense to me was like Doctor Strange is on trial, and they are basically like telling him they're saying, "Listen, we don't think that Scar- like Scarlet Witch is an issue. We're worried about you and how you've reacted to these multiverses. Like, yes, you've killed, you've imploded an entire multiverse, or an entire universe. So that's pretty bad. But then." 
they're like, oh, we're not worried about her. She comes in and kills them all. It's like you should have been worried about her. Like she's coming for you guys. Yeah, kind of like I told, I told you so. I like, know. Which I could. Yeah, weren't, I weren't, weren't, weren't they so worried about him because of like what they dealt with with their Doctor Strange and like yeah. and their yeah, universe? Yeah, Doctor Strange was, was, was a bad guy. Like good yeah. guy, bad intentions. Or no, all the way around. Bad guy, good intentions. And then, and then to have like, yes, he did some bad things, but their way of like putting the punishment on Doctor Strange is to go to like this outer planet sort of thing and blast him away with uh, like a, whatever that guy's power is. Like that's the execution you have for someone that's like you've whole held like a dear friend. It's like you're just gonna blast him away with your power. Like oh my god, that's pretty dark. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think like that would be the way to like end his life. I guess. Hey, the Illuminati don't play. I yeah, <laughs> they play for keeps. Um, also, I got to talk about how ridiculous yeah. uh, Charles Xavier's like chair was. He looked like a little oh VW. My god. Like, I get what well, they, they were doing. Ridiculous. They were doing. Uh, it was like an homage to like you know. No, I I know it's yeah. an homage, but like. He literally was like, if you like put like in this, his arms were like up here. He was like basically just a floating head. He, well, it, it made him look very little. Yeah, it looked like it he was driving really a Zamboni. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, like he's he's aged pretty well throughout the years, but he's old. Like he's definitely getting older. And seeing the him acting, trying to pull her out of the rubble, I was like, there was no way he would ever pull her out of the rubble. Like, he, he's not strong enough for that. This dude's like almost 90 years old. Actually, I'm going to say that too. Yeah, this, how, what are the chances that his body was just CGI'd on top of that guy who was walking in that scene? Like, that guy was way too fit, like full for, 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 for Patrick Stewart. Yeah. I'm not even talking buff. I'm just talking over 140 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if I, it's because we were, like, we were, te- I mean, we were treated so well with Spider-Man with, like, the cameos and all that, uh, with, like, Andrew Garfield and Tom McGuire and Charlie Cox, like, and it's, this also could have been because of the leak, but, like, I didn't, like, feel the excitement as much as I wanted to by seeing, like, the cameos we got in this one. Like, yeah, I, I mean, like, I no one was batting yeah. down the doors for Fantastic Four. Uh, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, no. I, 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 I understood the fan casting part of it because they've been trying to fan cast him and his wife into this thing for years. So I thought, I mean, if that was a surprise, if I hadn't, if the leak hadn't happened, I think I would have been like, oh, that's kind of cool that they did that. But then I kind of agree with Owen. Like it just, it was, he was just kind of awkward to me. I didn't really mm-hmm. like, I didn't the really. The smartest man in the universe, Reed Richards. So I was like, what? <laughs> what yeah, no, just... what an entrance right there, huh? <laughs> what an entrance. Also, I didn't but like, I... why did we, Captain Marvel, like the other Captain Marvel? I had no idea. Yeah, that oh, was like, just her friend, I... like the other pilot, right? Yeah, it was like an odd one. Well, you know, yeah. Brie Larson was probably busy, man. Yeah, doing, she was too busy um, <laughs> hanging out with Vin Diesel. <laughs> More recently. Um... But yeah, I mean, I I kind of do worry. I hope they don't kind of Marvel doesn't make it a habit to try to do this like a lot moving forward. Dude, Charlie Theron is the ne- is in the yeah. last one. They're already still doing it. Like, yeah. they're going to keep doing it because of how successful Spider Man was. Like, I I really hope it doesn't just turn into okay. Now we're going to get like every famous person. Like Brad Pitt's <laughs> going to be in the new Marvel movie. I'm like, I don't know about that. Actually, that would be kind of sick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of like who he can even play. <laughs> like, yeah, who next you'll see uh, Tom Hardy as Wolverine, which is yeah. Awesome. Well, th- dude, they did it with uh, Harry Styles as like Thanos' brother or something. I was like, dude, they have all of these famous people coming in now, and I'm like, it just doesn't hit the same as it did when. Like, it's it's kind of been played out. I feel like dude, they've exasperated all actors to do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like literally, like when like the Harry Styles was a perfect example. It's like. Everyone also didn't care. No one cared about that one. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> well, Variety fucked up on the film's opening, like, the premiere, and, like, put it out to the public, like, so everyone knew before. I mean, I don't think anyone really cared, but it did suck that they ruined that surprise, like, in their review, and then they put it on Twitter the night the premiere ended. So it was like, oh, thanks, like, Variety. Like, yeah. not saying that I needed that surprise, but it would have been nice to be like, oh, like, oh, oh, he's in it. 
I, I wonder what they're gonna do with him next. So, you know, I, that's what all these like things are now. It's like all these actors are like signing up for like, all right, we're gonna introduce you in a small little snippet here, but here's an outline for what's coming for you next. And you know, there's a there's a lot of faith in that, I guess. Right? They have to be like, all right, like I'm trusting that there's a bigger arc that's gonna be worth it for me to participate in this. Well, and, I feel like um, it's easy for them to do it too because they're just, all they have to do is say, "Hey, do you want twenty five million dollars?" Then, <laughs> and everyone's gonna say, "Yeah, probably." Like that's, I'll do that. I'm, I'm guessing that's why Charlize Theron did it. Like, I think it's Wait, mostly what about Charlize the money Theron now. In? What she's who? What is Charlize Theron in? Where? What? Where is she coming? She from? was in. She, she's in the. She she's the, in the, the, the end scene. The mid credit. The mid credit scene with oh, Doctor yeah, Strange. Right, yeah. 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 And which means. And yeah, you don't get you don't get someone like her. her like, uh, yeah, you don't get someone like her unless you know it's she. They're gonna use her in a significant way down the line. Yeah. Um, I I think she's playing Clea, and I can uh, I'll look it up really quick. They're gonna. I didn't she's know who this was. So. League with Dormammu or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so you know, I I, I think most people in the theater were kind of. I, I didn't know who she was. I had to like. I got on my phone and looked it up after the movie got out. Um, so that's why that mid credit scene kind of like fell flat for me. I was like, well, I guess it's cool that Charlie Theron is in the MCU now, but I don't know who that is. So, you know, you have to like, but get on even just bringing, even just bringing Dormammu back. I mean, it just like negates the entire point of the first Dr. Strange movie. It's like, Oh yeah. You know that this uh, villain that you defeated um, well, a while ago, he's back. Well, no, they, put, well, they no, well, I think, you just no, he didn't trap me. Yeah, that's how he got him trapped in the mirror dimension. Yeah, I don't know. I forgot what happened to Dormammu at the end. But uh, yeah. for everyone yeah. listening, uh, yeah. Clea <clears throat> uh, debuted in 1964, a powerful magic user from the dark dimension. Uh, Stanley and Steve Ditko created her. Just a little there history you have for it. everybody. From the dark there dimension is a um, white woman <laughs> with blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the dark dimension. Um, you know, I, I do. I want to point. I want to point to. You, there was a negative review that I read of the movie that hates the multiverse angle because it, it doesn't allow for many like consequences. Like you can die and then like you can kind of be alive in another universe. So yeah. it, they kind of think it kind of kills the like. It, there's no like uh, like real stakes if you can just come back in another universe in another universe um i can kind of see that point but uh i just want to know what you guys thought of that yeah i mean i I guess they could kind of they did some things where they're like first rule of multiverse jumping or whatever is don't believe anything so it's like i guess you can't just bring someone in because they've had like um, a lot of different experiences but they also have proven that like Doctor Strange had a sister and she died, but that happened to both of them. So like obviously they're all right. somewhat similar. So it's like they're kind of breaking their own rules and they're kind of it's it's such a hard thing to get around because no matter what, there's gonna be loopholes in that. It's like, why don't you just I mean it's it's with any kind of show, like in Rick and Morty when they have the multiverses and stuff, there's there's guidelines that you have to kind of try and stay within, but you can also do whatever you want. So it's like how do we break through that? How do we make it interesting? How do we not give them um, just like the power to kind of do anything without any consequence? Because that is kind of what it seemed like. And that's right. also how it seemed like um, Rachel McAdams' character felt. Like everyone in her universe just got murdered. And she doesn't have a job anymore. And she's just like, okay, <laughs> like, we yeah, beat him. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so are you going to go to a different universe now and work for the Illuminati there? Like, what's going to be your move? <laughs> That's true, yeah. actually. Yeah, she's a little too okay with like how everything wraps up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I there. Mean, I, it's something I've always thought about. What the problem with the Marvel is? <clears throat> the Marvel, like how because it did so well, they're just going to continue the money train. Mm-hmm. But um, where does it stop? Like the yeah. multiverse is is their like key to like keeping it going. Like you, they can't like create. I mean, they can create new characters, but they like they're not like marquees anymore. They use their marquees. So it's like we have three different Spider Men. Are we like? Can we expect our kids to get a new Tony Stark? Like when does it stop? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, like that's, that's actually really interesting. Yeah. 
That's yeah. like that. Like there has to be that totally. It's BS that they, you know, like Black Widow is dead in the movies, but in the timeline she's not because the movie came. No, excuse me, other way around. Dead in the timeline, but she's alive because of the movie came out. That's fine. I, that's like I get that. But like what you're saying, like the, no consequence is dead here. We can bring someone else like when they do with in the flash with uh, whatever the freaking guy who's the same guy in every single different character. I forgot his name. Um, but yeah, I just when is it going to stop? Like mm-hmm. when is it going to end? Yeah, because it's really yeah. hard to like stop this money machine. Yeah, the rules are very loose, right? So it means like if someone is uh, does die, like you know, like Black Widow, like in Endgame, it was like, oh, well, can you just bring her back? Uh, you know, and they, you know, they, they kind of did that with like, because Gamora, she dies in like, Infinity this War. This is different. <laughs> but like, this is different. <laughs> you know, like, it's yeah. like kind of like, uh, I, they kind of play fast and loose with their own rules. And then like, I mean, I guess it's only a big deal if you really look into it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I kind of accept it for what it is, but it is an interesting kind of like take on like, oh, well, does that kind of affect the movie the overall impact of the movie if like oh there's no real stakes because you know people can just come back or you know no. mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of i can see it affecting it for some people watching it but i just thought that was interesting that it kind of it does make it like oh well you know people can just die willy-nilly and we'll get them back somehow in another universe <laughs> there's a different yeah. version of that person yeah i don't know well, I, I, um, haircut, different not costume call it a day yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's going to have, I mean, if we see Doctor Strange again, obviously we know that he used the dark hold. And so now he has this third eye. I'm going to have a really hard time getting used to that. Cause I guess you were telling me that it's <laughs> in the comics and stuff, but like, it just was so hard to see that. Cause it just is super unnerving, which I guess is the point, but yeah. it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Well, how he I feel was about- able to hide it. The other Doctor Strange was able to hide it. Okay, yeah, he'll bring it out when he needs to or something. Yeah, maybe it's like, you know, like a King Cobra type situation when he gets attacked, the, you know, the the third eye comes out. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, that was strange. Um, I don't know. No pun intended. I'm curious curious to hear what you guys think about this, too, because some of the other criticism from some people, because this is a Doctor Strange movie, felt that he played, like, second fiddle to... The Scarlet Witch. It felt more like it was her film rather than it his really film. did seem like her movie for sure. And I was wondering if you guys agree with that, and like, if there if that is even an issue. Like, did it even bother you that like you know this is supposed to be a Doctor Strange movie, but it felt very much like it was her film. Her film. I would say that her motivations drove the storyline, but it was a Doctor Strange story. If that makes sense. Like <clears throat> her motivations put everything in motion but i would say that like all the flack and all the problems landed on dr strange which made it more like he's the one who's got like the main focus and another thing it's like yeah wanna just stole the show because no one again they they actually tricked us they finally got us this time with like a surprise so i think the shocking like being like oh shit wanda is like bad fucking ass we're all paying attention to her um but like we got four different Doctor Stranges, mm-hmm. we got a Zombie, Do- Supreme, uh, Bad One, whatever you want to call that one. But like we got a lot of Doctor Strange is in there. So I, I I say it's her motivations are the one that drive the story. But it's I it's still a Doctor Strange movie to me. Yeah, that's true. And it was up to him to save. I mean, it's his movie because he's the one who saves the day. So it's like you I'm not going to name it. Thanos Infinity War. It's like <laughs> the heroes are gonna be the the one who takes the stage and has the, the poster. So yeah, there was a real like bait and switch on that too. I agree with Jack because like I got the impression that she, like when they were promoting the movie and like that she would like he was like going she was gonna help him in some way, and the fact that she turned out to be like oh this is gonna be the person that's causing all the problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that was like a nice and pleasant surprise. And like, you know, in the day and age where like everything is revealed to you, like before a movie comes out, I thought they did a good job of kind of hiding that aspect of it uh, leading up to the release. So I made it more surprising for me at least. And then I was also, when I was watching her do this. It gave me confidence. And this is like not to do with Dr. Strange. 
it it reminded me that like the MCU could probably do a really good like Dark Phoenix movie because like I was like watching her and how like unbalanced that she was and if you got the right mm-hmm. girl to play Jean Grey Dark Phoenix and have like good mm-hmm. writers and a good director that story could also be really well done just watching mm-hmm. how that it's kind of played out with her and like how far they like were able to go with her as far as like showing that she was completely unhinged uh by, by, you know, all the loss that she's felt and, like, you know, wanting to have her kids and not be lonely, basically. Yeah, you know, I thought they did a good job of, like, showing that her madness but and how the, it kind of... But at the same time, too, like, they did kind of keep it from us that she was going to be the villain, but they also didn't really even explicitly say it in the movie. Like, at a, we just keep hearing that, oh, someone is sending monsters after America Chavez. And then, at a, like, you just kind of figure out, like, Wanda's like, oh yeah, I did that. But you don't, they don't really say it. Like, I kind of got confused for a little bit too. I was like, wait, is there another person out there that's we're still waiting for? Like, it, it basically took halfway through the movie to, for me to realize, okay, this there's not going to be another villain. Right. Like, well, I feel like I, 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 I kind of waiting I for I think it. that's where WandaVision came in to, like, help suffice that because the last thing we remember of WandaVision is her with the, you know, the two separate bodies and the her studying the Dark Horror. Um, I think it would have been better if the, the two were a little bit closer together. So it was a little bit above uh, in mind that she was like going through that stuff. But we also didn't realize what she was really looking at at that point. Right. So mm-hmm. like you're saying, like if we, if you put, you could easily, we could have, we could have easily put two and two together by saying like Wanda vision. She has this weird ass book. Wong is now saying this weird ass book is like the death book. Oh, Wanda's the bad person from like the moment her thing changes or the field changes yeah. and you're like, Oh shit. Gotcha. Yeah. But like, gotcha. again, I think it just, that was just time. <clears throat> like we, because they're all connected, you have to know stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, this is like a little, a little bit, a little bit off topic, but it's like, I keep thinking the first thing that I thought of was like this character, America Chavez, it was written back in like a little bit of a different time, but it seems so slighted for them to have like one of their first, hispanic characters but her name is america and i'm like <laughs> it just seems so like yes they have her last name is chavez but to me that was just kind of seemed like that was definitely from when the time that her character was invented i was just like oh my gosh that just probably wouldn't necessarily fly now and i'm yep. pretty sure that like she was also touted as like the first lgbtqa uh like open person in there she was oh, really? yeah she nice. was like but there, it was, there, I, was, they, there was no representation a, with her in that her parents were gay. Um, mm-hmm. But, if I mean, if that's what they were talking about, Marvel's really stretching the limits on that bad boy. Yeah, I think that yeah. I think that was like, kind of like... I mean, I mean, it was cool to see and to have it, but I, yeah, I think they kind of were stretching it a little bit by kind of claiming that and making it a, a thing. Yeah, like, media, just, just for the sake of it. Yeah, like I thought, like they could if they did the John Russo in in uh, in Endgame, like he was the uh, the the gay dude that talking about like you know going on a date, like that was an awesome one, like that was great representation of it. This was just like, mm-hmm. hey, watch this, like we got a pair of parents that are the same sex. Watch it. Yeah, Tom Tom you know? Hilston t- talked about like with Loki because you know they make a reference to him being like bisexual but he was like they could have done more he felt that they could have done more with that instead of just making it like a a passing like thing Wait, they like, did? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. He, they, like, oh, yeah yeah they did yeah so like it's like you know, you know, you know, I, you know yeah, the line what, what the one where he's like basically dating himself is that what it is no no i thought him, he was into me in, obviously he was into the other loki but she was a woman no it was him it, it was the loki and what's the girl's name uh gaius i'm like blanking on her name yeah, fuck. Totally whatever, like, whatever girl Loki, which is like, oh, you know, messing around with a couple princes, princesses, and then looks at him and just goes, you too? And he doesn't deny the princes part. So it's like, that's that's how like Marvel goes like, Ooh. yep, like yeah. that's it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> wow. You're welcome, guys. We represent you. <laughs> God. Yeah, 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 it's like one of those things. Like, if it, if you're gonna do it, make it central to like who the character is or to the story, or like, you know, like don't kind of like just kind of throw it in there and be like, yeah, like we did a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like I'm all for it if you're gonna just do it and like do it honestly and and not kind of hold back. 
Yeah. Like if you're gonna do it, you can't like sugarcoat it. Um, yeah. And, and they, you know, uh, the thing with America Chavez, I think there were some complaints that it kind of was like, like, okay, you're using that, you're promoting it that way, but it, it almost seems so glossed over, you know, in the grand scheme of the the film and her character. Hmm. Exactly. But I, I, I don't want to butcher this girl's name because I cannot pronounce it, but I thought she was actually very good uh, in the movie. Oh, she did a great job. Yeah. Totally. Oh, American um, because, Yeah, I thought she was really good. And uh, because sometimes kid characters like that, they can get on your nerves, you know? There can be like little precocious and annoying. Um, but I thought she held her own against like some heavyweights, against like, you know, the Cumberbatch and, you know, uh, I'm going to talk like Benedict Wan also uh, very good in this as well. And, you know, and, Elizabeth Olsen, like she held her own against like a bunch of veterans, and I think mm-hmm. she is she's pretty young in real life too. I think she's thirteen or fourteen when she made it. Uh, so kudos to her as well. I thought she did a good job. Like basically, like, they also did a really good job with her power. I think too. Like there's if you see it on the like in the comic book, making that sort of star portal. I guess you could say yep. there's a lot of ways you could have done it really wrong, but they made it look so cool. And just like the, when, when she punches and it become, and like creates the portal, that was super badass. Um, and then also just all of the, like when they're kind of going through all the different, um, multiverses and like that, oh, scene that was, that was cool. Was super cool. Like there were just so many really, really cool scenes. I guess you and I talked about this. I think the fight with the music notes, like that was, yeah, that was awesome. absolutely genius. Um, something that like has never been done before. That was just super cool. I thought they took a lot of really cool avenues into, I mean, it's exactly what I was hoping for when I was going into this movie was what are they going to do? That's trippy. What are they going to do? That's kind of a little bit different than the typical Captain America punching someone. Um, so I think they did a, a really good job. And and the scariest thing I think was those um, so like the trespassers or whatever you wanted, like the demons. And when yeah. he, when Dr. Strange, like, makes them his cape and then he's like flying towards that um fortress that was terrifying like that would have scared me so bad as a kid those things are freaky and very sam raimi by the way if you're familiar with like his uh older stuff especially his horror movies like that was it's just sam raimi getting to do whatever the fuck he wanted and it was just so nice to see that like they gave him all that money and they're like all right we're trusting you to like do what you need to do with this, and they let him do his how thing. Much like, cost, how much did it cost to make? Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume uh, about 200 million, but let me look it up just in case. Uh, I, just thought, I just thought of uh, one thing on the story. Um, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange and Wong, like they tout themselves as like really smart and stuff, but like they made like every mistake, like handling Wanda, <laughs> like that there was, <laughs> like, like just like a horror of like. Like, even American Chavez, like, says it when they're at Comartage. He's just like, oh, so the person who's trying to kill me right now, you went up to your and asked for help and told me exactly where you were? And he goes, yeah. 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 And then fast forward to uh, the tomb, and I'm doing this air quotes on video, tomb uh, that they go to for Scarlet Witch. And she just, within, like, the first minute, just realizes, oh, this is a throne. This is, like, yeah. where I'm most powerful at. And you're like, Sneak the Sorcerer Supreme would have known this, right? Like, yeah, you know, like maybe let's not bring her here. Like, I get it that there's part of the story to get like the glyphs off the wall, but like, and she yeah, just flung like, him, and she just flung him over that ledge with like no regard of like if he survived or not. I just thought that was great, and she was like, that uh. was hilarious. <laughs> and I, yeah, like, uh. no. also, also, too, like I know they have to go and kind of see these other Doctor Stranges, but like, he doesn't seem he didn't seem like he was scared at all. Like after the Illuminati comes and they're like, you're the most dangerous person in the multiverse. He's like, let's go find another one of me. I'm like, dude, he's going to try and fight you. Like, Yo, yeah. They just told you that you're not a very good person in a lot of these different places. And he's like, let's go find him. It's like, Oh my gosh, man, you really don't listen to what anyone's telling you. Dude, Jack, I'm so glad you brought that up. Cause it was like, they are supposed to be such intelligent dudes and you're right. They were like, they just put themselves in situations with her where it was like, why, why, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, she clearly, like, yeah, I thought that was great. I also love when he went to go see her the first time and she said her name and she's like, shoot, you didn't tell me her name. Yeah, was no, I thought like, that was no. so funny. <laughs> and then That's she was actually like, 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 when, <laughs> like when, Owen, well, when Owen was confused as to like if she was a villain, as soon as she said, she's like walking and she kind of like goes, 
That's right. I didn't say your name. I didn't know her name. Yeah. You didn't tell me your name. I was like, she's the villain. She has to be because she's and then you kind of do all that. But yeah, wild, dude. Also, yeah, we're also, yeah like we're back, it's back to like the, the bad, like Doctor Strange is bad. We're, we're just like completely glazing over the fact that the first Doctor Strange we see was straight up going to kill America Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> just straight up. I'm going to take your power. Sorry. It's yeah, the only no, way. Uh-huh, yeah. Not happening. Like. Really would have been Fazul at that point. And then he gets murked by the thing that looks, I'm not, it looks exactly like the mimics from Edge of Tomorrow. Like, like <laughs> straight out of that movie. Like, they just took that villain and they're like, we're going to make it ours. Looks all exactly the same. All of those, like, Shadow Beasts reminded me of Dormammu and how he was built, like, built, like, constructed. Mm-hmm. You know? yep. Like, an energy type thing with face. It was very cool. Yeah. So, so the movie was um two hours and six minutes. Do you think it did enough, or did you think it felt rushed, or did you think it felt too long? Like, were you kind of add on that in? I saw a I think- tweet that said it was like worse pacing than Moon Knight, and I was like, that's a horrible like Moon Knight was terribly <laughs> paced. Moon Knight was terribly paced, but like this movie was fine. I mean, you, you didn't have to explain America Chavez that much. You got her powers down, and then you just went right into the good stuff. Like, I think we found out Wanda's Wanda. 15 minutes in boom thought it was great can't say mm-hmm. anything, yeah. nothing about that yeah i think it definitely i mean it opened just automatically like they just threw you right in and it gave you action right off the bat which i was not expecting i thought there was going to be a little bit of um some build up or whatever i'm glad they didn't do a whole backstory on like thanos uh i, I didn't really understand the whole conversation with the other doctor at the funeral i thought that was just pointless like there were a few scenes like that where it was just like this is definitely just filler to kind of get them to the next point um there are a few scenes like that that were uh, it didn't really make sense to me and um especially from a character that was like in the first one a little bit and now you're just expected to remember him even though it was years and years and years later um yeah i don't know i but i think it just continuously got better like as as we were going through it, it was just Every single thing just kept getting better as uh, as the movie went along. Okay. Uh, what do you guys? What did you think of? Um, because Rachel McAdams didn't sign on for two movies when uh she did the first Doctor Strange, and I was actually surprised that uh she came back because she kind of had like the I don't like to say thankless girlfriend role, but that, that's kind of what it was in the first one. So I didn't think she would want to come back, but I actually. Even though she doesn't have like a huge part in the sequel, I still I thought they utilized her well in the back end of the movie, uh, like the version of her character in that particular universe. Yeah, well, also I mean it was an, important for him too because it was kind of his internal struggle um, was oh I didn't get the girl and then he goes and sees all the other strangers and they didn't get her either and it's like I love you in every universe but I'll never be able to get you. Um, I mean, dude, you're Doctor Strange. You're not gonna settle down probably so um i mean that was kind of good for his character to kind of go through that sort of thing but um i thought she definitely played a bigger role um than i was expecting and just as big if not bigger than um in the first one um yeah i mean i kind of have this i mean this might be a hot take here but like it's a story there's a main character there's a supporting character there are characters that help drive the story along. There are characters that help point the compass of the main character. I hate this gripe of like the hapless girlfriend or something. It's like, no, you're not like that. Like Rachel McAdams character in the first one was basically his moral compass, like how he mm-hmm. should like decide about going about things. Uh, um, uh, like the other one is, is Jane Adams with, uh, with Thor. Like, what are you talking about? Like she inspired him to do these good things and like, you know, like act on the hero and like, he shows that he can care about someone and fight. So I, I don't, I, I don't like that gripe all the time of like the hapless, like, you know, girlfriend. Um, but that being said, I do think that she was great with as like the, whatever researcher, um, was like during the Illuminati. I thought that was a very good, like thing to do because it helped the story along, like by saying, um, like there's a connection, like you were saying. Like there's always going to be a connection with every Doctor Strange and that and Rachel McAdams. Um, it's just never going to work out, but it's always there. So that's always great. But yeah, yeah. I think you know. I think the problem with like just going on the whole like the thankless girlfriend role, the hapless girlfriend role. I think what has kind of changed a lot with these movies in particular, like comic book movies in general, is that 
female characters now are a little bit more than they were back in the day. They're like they're they're not just like female characters playing like the damsel in distress or like the girlfriend. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying that. So I think that's why people kind of like oh like 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 I think we brought this up before with like Thor. I don't think Natalie Portman would want to do the third one if she was just going to play the girlfriend again. Like yeah. I think that it, I think that she. You know, it was a. I'm not saying that she was bad in Thor or Thor: The Dark World, but like, definitely not like her A game. It's not really like a part that screams like. Oh, there's not a lot of depth in it. You know, it's like, it is what it is on the page. Like she's just she's a love interest, and yeah, sometimes but she's a love interest. But she was the one who discovered Thor. She was the one who fig- figured out the Newton's Bridge. She's the one who who got him out of uh, the hospital. He's you know all of these things. She was a very important plot point in that movie. And then mm-hmm. in the second one, we can all agree that movie was a shit show from the beginning. Like, just not, just yes. not a good. It was just not a good movie. But again, Natalie Portman's character was like the most important, what a part of the most important part of it, minus Thor. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, Natalie Portman wasn't top. Like, they had more lines. But if it wasn't her character, there none. A lot of that stuff doesn't happen. So yeah. that's really what I'm, I'm not saying like, yeah, she's like fucking an actual, just like girlfriend. They're like, Oh, it's okay, baby. But like, no, like they're doing stuff. It's just a different role. And you can't, like, yeah, you can. Luckily they have in the new one, we're getting off topic with the movie, but um, in the new one, they have a storyline where Jane becomes Thor. So that's awesome. But like, you can't just all of a sudden make one of the girlfriends like a superhero. Right. So no, that's, I just that's think, true. I just think that they do actually hold a lot like because superheroes are freaking like when they were written, like we're talking about, they weren't written with a lot of depth. You know, right. the woman, the woman was always the one to or the female character or the supporting character was always the one to like guide the compass or or, you know, pick them up when they're down when they need they need someone to talk to. So that's kind of where I, I see those those girlfriend characters. I do understand like the gripe, but I think we should attest that more to terrible writing. Um. And then, like the the character itself, like yeah, uh, like like in like in Avengers Ultron, uh, he's like he's bragging about her, saying like he's a Nobel. She's oh yeah, well Jane's a Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize winner or something. And, like he's like mm-hmm. super proud to be with her and like all that stuff. Or and Tony's like oh yeah, Pepper runs the Fortune five hundred company. It's like so I think yeah, it's just no, they're not hapless. I get what they're saying though, but. Yeah. yeah, and they kept bringing uh, it back in in um, Endgame. He's like sad about her. He's like, "Oh, I've I've ruined my life. She's not. I'm. We're not together anymore. Like I kind of messed that up." Um, and obviously, he went down like and into a dark place. And like maybe she could have helped him with that or something. I, I think they've done a good job keeping her around. Um, and so I mean, I think Rachel McAdams has done a great job playing um, that for Doctor Strange. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so many people on Twitter have been posting. You were asking about what that movie was that she was in. Uh, it's called About Time. I didn't know the uh, name of it, um, but I found that oh, out. But a lot of people, have been, a lot of people have been posting like that quote, "I love you" in every universe, or whatever. And they just have like posters from that movie. She's also in the Time Traveler's Wife. They have the picture from the Notebook, and they have this. So like, they think that she is the official queen of like time travel universe movies now. They've like yeah. dubbed her that. <laughs> Um, not really but you know it takes place in another time period that's what they were trying to say that it doesn't take place in this um i I didn't get that from what i (laughs) saw it um i do want to ask you this because like and it can kind of wrap things up unless you guys want to add some stuff but do you think that they kind of let wanda off the hook a little too i mean i know totally too easily considering all the things that because it was like she does what she, like America shows her herself, right? And she's like, "Oh, I see now. I'm the problem. I have to fix this." And they're like, "Oh!" And then she destroyed, I think, in every universe. Oh, she did the right thing in the end, but it was like she fucked up a lot on the way yeah. to doing the right thing in the end. So, do you think that they kind of like that was kind of like like everyone likes Scarlet Witch, right? They like Elizabeth Olsen. They like the character. They don't want to. I think there was like a line of like trying not to make her too much of a villain, where you can't redeem her. Um, she murdered five heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but even even they tried to explain that away by being like, oh, like Wanda, the real Wanda is like trapped like within that this was like, the kind witch. of like, that was the yeah, witch. That was the witch. That wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. So like there was that kind of loose uh 
it's not really her, guys. I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's literally so what Jack. It's literally what Jack just said. It's like there's no repercussions for her actions because now they're just if there's another hero or another villain that comes in, they're like, we need Scarlet Witch's powers, so we forgive you for all of your murder and crime. That's fine. Oh, um, what do you put a straight jacket on her? But also, too, it's like <laughs> they said that they said that the Darkhold like ex- it extracts a heavy toll or something, but. I didn't see anything for her except just her, she had black fingers. Whereas Doctor Strange gets another eye, like yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, like what's her punishment? Well, I think I think Scarlet Witch is the like the keeper of the dark hold or whatever correct. it is. So I think that um nice. that she is like it, it's kind of like you know that's her shtick. Like if anyone else uses it, not gonna work. Yeah. Um, and then I think whoever said like Wanda is trapped inside. I think that is kind of valid because yeah, like that was prof- that was Charles Xavier that said that I think that she was like yeah yeah I, I mean it, it's like, no but but the because, only person trapped earlier, inside was because, the other Wanda that she was like um, I, I interpreted it that way too I interpreted like while she was day walking or daydreaming dream walking dream walking that it could have been the 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 Wanda from there stuck in there but I was yeah but um it, no I was I was gonna talk to a line where it's like when they're in the field and she is talking about like, oh, well, it's me asking politely now. Later, yeah. it's going to be the Scarlet Witch. I feel mm-hmm. like she knows the duality in that, and then it's kind of like Bruce Banner and Hulk, where like yeah. eventually just comes out. So, I do True. think that she's trapped in there, but yeah, there's, like, what are you going to do? Who's going to stop her? No, no one can. Like, there's, like, there's, there can be no repercussions with her because there's no one going to fucking stop her. She as like she can Just, rewrite her fucking everything with her mind. So yeah, yeah, you're yeah. kind of like stuck in that that position where it's like she needs to be repenting herself. She, she needs yeah. to be good, or else everyone's fucked. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. self repenting. And, and Owen made that point earlier. Like I, I like that they kind of said like you know she was like I know I can't beat you, like so she had to like basically like I don't want to say play mind games, but really had to be like this is the only thing if you have you have to see this. For yourself, you have to see what you're doing. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, Thanos couldn't stop her in Endgame. Literally, the second he sees her again, he <laughs> yeah. has to destroy half of his army just to not die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, there's yeah, a strong case. There's a strong, yeah, there's a strong case that Scarlet Witch and or Captain Marvel could have just done that by themselves. Yeah, and they didn't need the rest of the team at all. No. no. <laughs> But um, well, I guess I, because it's, yeah. It's yeah. One of the things I wanted to mention too is like I think that I'm starting to not really like the um all of the other people at Comartage, like the other um masters of the mystic arts. Cause like America Chavez at the end was like trying to do sparks. It's like does that mean anybody can just go there and learn to become a wizard? Because right. Ned is, Ned is magical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought you had to have something. In order to do that, it just seems like, oh, you put a sling ring on and now you're a wizard. It's like, now you can do whatever. I also, the Minotaur or whatever, I thought that was gratuitous. It's like, why do you need a Minotaur? And then they had that girl who stabbed the Darkhold originally. It's like, they kind of added these other characters. I was like, who are these people? Like, I guess they had to have someone to sacrifice. (laughs) They got to be in the credits too. Even, even yeah. the Minotaur was in the even the Minotaur was in the credits. I know. <laughs> it's like who is like what is this? <laughs> is yeah, this I from another was... universe too? Like where did where did that come from? Yeah. No I also want to sh- I want to shout out the score uh, the score by Danny Elfman because I thought the score was really good and mm-hmm. you know D- Danny Elfman has, has done like the original Batman score. I mean he did Batman Returns. He's done a lot of scores. He also Star did, Wars, uh, the Spider Man uh, films with uh, Sam Raimi. Uh, the score itself kind of lended to the whole like horror movie vibe because like it wasn't like a big like epic like superhero movie score. It was very much yeah. like a, like you were watching this kind of fantastical kind of like horror film. I thought that that was really cool as well. Um, I do want to ask you guys since uh, we're in this new phase of the Marvel movies. So this is Phase Four, and I think we've had Black Widow, Shang Chi, Eternals, Spider Man. And this so far, where do you kind of rank it in that group of movies? Um, I would say top two with Spider Man. 
Um, Black Widow was at the bottom of my list. I did, thought that that one wasn't very good. Um, Eternals was pro- would probably be next. Shang-Chi, gosh, that one was amazing. So it's like, I think they've done a really good job with Phase 4. Um, definitely have, I mean, every single phase has had some of the movies that aren't going to be the best. Like, they had Incredible Hulk in Phase 1. They had um, Thor The Dark World in, I guess, Phase 2. Um, and so like each one's going to kind of have one that doesn't work so well, which is, I guess for this one is probably Eternals. Um, yeah. but I think it's definitely, I might've like, I might like Shang-Chi more than Spider-Man. I don't know, but, what? um, <laughs> Mark that, clip that, clip that, clip that. That is a hot oh. take for real. What? That is a ridiculous <laughs> take. <laughs> I was what more moved. By Shang-Chi? <laughs> yeah so many things happened in spider-man that were moving what oh god okay it's your opinion I'll, 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 I'll say it with one word zendaya uh, <laughs> well you know what she was moving in spider-man no way home so i'm not gonna if you're, if you're telling me that you weren't more moved by aunt may dying than <laughs> okay, all yeah, of shang chi I really have to to really have to give you a temperature check there, bud. You serious? Mercy, or even when he, got, or even when he says, or even when he says goodbye to his friends at the end, like, you were moved by that. Oh, I was. Like, I yeah. was. I just wanted. I wanted to stir up the pot a little bit. Yeah, you. You certainly did. Yeah, you, yeah. You, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, what? Yeah, you have an emotional connection to Shang Chi's girlfriend, who is one of the most annoying characters ever. What Aquafina? She's funny. That's not she's funny, but I didn't. Oh, she's she, just she's she's gonna become his love interest eventually. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Also, yeah. oh, speaking of which, like, did Shang Chi like just hit the go to the Sanctorum Sanctum and then like peace out? Like, where is that? Yeah, they, they, like, the perfect, they dipped out at the perfect time. Yeah. Yeah, they're like we we dodged a bullet. Yeah, what <laughs> the <laughs> fuck? Like, what did they need Shang Chi for then? All then, so. Mm. Um, but yeah. I mean, I th- I'd say it's number two. Uh, yeah, Spider Man, Spider Man, this Doctor Strange, um, Shang Chi, Black Widow, Eternals. I I have that same lineup. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. And you know, and even now, I mean, even I I told Owen this too. Like, I did not like Eternals at all when I saw it in the theater. But then when I watched it at home, I was like, it's not as bad as. The initial it's viewing was. Long. You just gotta watch it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long movie, and there's a lot of characters you end up forgetting about by the time the movie's over. But um, it's, but I don't even think like even at their worst, I don't even think it's like a horrible movie now. I mean, it held up a little bit better in the second viewing at home. They've just with Eternals too, it's, and now with this multiverse one, it's like they've just opened up the door for so much, and I think. There's a little bit of um, it's gonna get old really quick. Like they they have to kind of do all this backtracking. Like is that is that big celestial thing gonna always be in the oh, earth? My point, yeah. Like is there gonna be all these things that we have to kind of keep saying, hey, we did that, remember? Or are they just gonna be like, ah, oh, well, no, it's not there anymore or something. So like, there's so many things happening. There's so many big moving parts. Like. I don't know. At I, some I, point, there is. some point, there, I'm going to get tired be, of it. At some point, there's going to be a movie, like in like with Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, where they have Man of Steel stuff happening at the same time of a Batman vs Superman kind of cut thing. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's got to happen in Marvel eventually. That there has to be two cataclysmic events like going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like this Earth has been under so much stress. Just, oh yeah. Like. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Every single day, it's just a new thing where they're just like, oh, you know, snap. Oh, you know, celestial in the Pacific Ocean. Oh, you know, yeah, I, like, I explosions in every single continent at all times. Like, yeah, I, I haven't really, I haven't hit the wall of I'm tired of Marvel movies, but I can feel it coming. Where Ooh. after a while, I'll, I'll be like, gosh, like. This is just the step that, like, I, I'm not interested in this anymore. Um, Eternals was, a- after Eternals, I was like, oh, gosh, like another Marvel movie. And hopefully my patience doesn't run out, but this one definitely kept the fire lit. I mean, I can only think, I mean, I'm excited for Thor. Be cool. 
Other than that, I really am excited for Blade, whenever that comes out. I hope that one's got a horror style to it, too. I mean, yeah, because they can use Dane, uh, the, whatever his name is, um, Jon Snow. So that'll be dope. Hopefully oh, they, Kit Harrington. Yeah, Kit Harrington. I put him, and then I think I'm only excited for. Uh, I hope to do Ghost Rider. Other than that, yeah, you really can't keep me that much interested. Like Secret Wars, I don't think will be like that exciting. Like I, mean, I think Samuel, even something Jackson. like, like She Hulk doesn't interest me that much. Um, like another Ant Man and the Wasp. I don't know if that one. I mean, that one's probably going to be kind of cool, like with the Quantum Realm, but like. Quantum Mania or whatever that is, I don't know. Yeah, the, the Ant, the Ant Man and the Wasp wasn't; it didn't super do it for me. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. 